Hey, everybody, welcome back. My guest tonight is an actor you know from The Big Sick, Silicon Valley, and of course, his blockbuster abs. Please welcome to a late show, Kumail Nanjiani. Hello, Kumail. How are you? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> the people at home will never know or understand the chaos you just saw as we tried to make this phone call begin. Well, no, I've been recording the whole time, and this is definitely Good. going on Twitter. Good. Good. Blow the lid off of this so-called professionalism <laughs> that I have here. Hey, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm great. What if I said that? Oh, thriving in the apocalypse. <laughs> how are you, you make Steven? a lot of friends. Uh, uh, you know, I'm okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm here with my family, and thank God they know what they're doing, so we can actually have this, this, this conversation right now. My boys, unfortunately, are in school still. So they have to get dragged out of here to go to their online classes, and it's just me and my lovely wife Evie, right here. Are you are you uh, are you at home with your lovely wife Emily Gordon? Yeah, it's just uh, me, Emily, and our cat Bagel, and we're just trying to, you know, it's it's interesting. First of all, I was really excited to talk to you. No, how I are you? That how are you doing through all this? Well, you know, as a parent. Uh, of essentially all adult children who we've managed to wrangle into our house for the last nine weeks, there is there is that positive aspect of it is that we'll never get them all together like this again. Right, and so, right. and now, and that's, you know, that's joyful on a certain level, but of course behind that is is the, the knowledge of why, you know? That's like, I've, I've compared right. it to like, right. there's a soundtrack, an ominous soundtrack being played in the distance at all times. And also, it's a little strange to not know what the right thing to do next is. We've all gone into quarantine, and we're not sure what the responsible thing to do next is. And that, that, that's got its own level of anxiety. Well, the other thing that's hard about this, this, I don't, I mean, this, I, this does not feel like a normal late night conversation. Nothing uh, about this feels like normal late night. I'm here to tell you, as a guy who's been doing it, every night for nine weeks. Normal, not normal is normal, so please. Well, this is the other weird thing uh, I, it, it, that's hard about this is there's no way to like process through this, you know what I mean? Like usually, no matter how horrible a tragedy you go through, you're like, all right, um, I have to, there's different stages of, of grief or I have to process through this and then I'll come out on the other side. This is literally something that there is no way for you to process through. You're just in it. So for me, the best is only when I'm not actively thinking about it. Um, and that's another weird thing. W what happened was I was really obsessed with the news updates. You know, I was looking up stuff all the time, all the time. And then at some point I just had to be like, um, this is not helping my mental state. This really, it's really doing nothing to keep me or my family safer. So I just, I had to completely check out of those updates because it's, it's, it just, you, you know what you already know. And there's just so much information all the time that I, I just had to sort of, the only way I could get through it is by not constantly thinking about it, which also feels like cowardly or something. I, I don't think you're a coward. I think that's perfectly human. You got to give yourself a break. I understand that you've gotten a little emotional during the quarantine and that there have been some unusual things that have made you cry. <laughs> yeah, so on the podcast, we have a section where you start every podcast with like, what was the weird thing that made you cry this week? Um, and one of them was uh, just a couple weeks ago, you know what people got really into bread making i understand you're super into bread making right now i i'm i'm this week i have finally buckled down and made my own sourdough starter like from scratch and i've got actual i've got a bull rising in the next room uh i don't know what a bull is it's like a lump of dough okay it's um uh, so, so, so all these people were sort of tweeting pictures of bread and some people were annoyed at them and stuff. And, and I just saw a picture and I was like, wow, I, I really, I really, um, I like seeing this picture. So I just tweeted and said, I'm genuinely enjoying you guys making new bread. I want to see pictures of it. So for three days, people just tweeted pictures of these gorgeous and not so gorgeous loaves of bread they were making. 
And just looking at these pictures and the pride that people, I'm getting emotional right now, just the pride that people had in what they had made, this really small thing, you know, we're in this world where everything's out of our control, but they're like making these loaves of bread. And it just made me cry for three days straight. No, I, I get it. It's beautiful. It's the staff of life. You want to do something that's useful and nourishing and like and a creation at the same time and simple. When all this chaos and uncertainty, you want to do something simple and beautiful. I totally get it. I will hit you. Uh, is, is Instagram or Twitter? Where are you where are you getting these? These photos. Twitter, please. Twitter. 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 I will hit you on Twitter with yeah, this, Twitter. this Twitter. bread. We're baking it tonight. I'll, I'll, you'll see whether. <laughs> You let me know whether it was beautiful enough to make you cry. No, no, no. Even the ones that weren't beautiful made me cry. It feels like magic, you know, like making bread. I never, I didn't know. I have no idea where to start. I don't, oh my God. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Legally, I want, I, want, I want to get on to your new film, The Lovebirds, but legally I'm required to ask you about your body because it is a sensation, a global sensation. Um, <laughs> you have a new finely tuned physique because you're gonna be in the Eternals in Marvel. Um, you, you, you blew everybody away on the reveal. You out krasinski Krasinski. Yeah, thank you. I, I actually, when I saw you talking about it on your show, that I was so excited when that happened. That meant a lot to me. I really was. Are, are you, is it degrading? in quarantine or is it slowly just turning turning back into normal uh, adult male <laughs> no so here i'll show you i basically i i sort of saw the quarantine coming early so i just bought like just a bench and some weights wow okay and so i've been sort of working out as if the, as if it's the only thing tethering me to sanity um doing a lot because i think it is because Again, I feel like I'm saying this a lot, but when I first started working out a lot in between sets, I would just like start crying because I think I think, think of all like, that bread you can't have. Oh my! Oh yeah, I think that's why I was crying. I just pictures of carbs is all I could do uh, because I think like in the beginning at least, it's not that it's much better now, but I feel like 30% of my brain was just like working all the time to not freak out, right? It was like just working to keep that door shut, you know, 30% of my brain. And then when you're working out, you kind of can only focus on the weight. So then that door flew open. So in between sets, I would just sit and sort of <laughs> get really emotional. And then the, alarm, the, 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 the clock would go off like, well, all right, time to lift more weights, you know? So it, it actually really helped me in the first couple of weeks. Um, the new film is The Lovebirds. Uh, uh, with your co-star Issa Rae, it filmed in New Orleans um, during Mardi Gras, right? Last year. Yeah, we yeah we shot through Mardi Gras last year. Yeah. I, and I know you guys were supposed to be uh, released in theaters, but of course nobody's doing that right now. And so it's going to be available to stream uh, on Netflix starting when? Starting May twenty second, Friday. May twenty second, Friday. Okay, so. Normally, big premiere, red carpet. How, how are you going to do the premiere at home? Are you going to glam up? What are you going to do? Uh, well, Emily and I have, we ordered four pies this morning. And we're just going to eat a pies, bunch of like pies. Like dessert pies? Like pies? I got a key lime pie. Because I'm still like keeping up the diet. But this weekend, it's a key lime pie. I got a, 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 a apple pie. Blueberry pie, and then I ordered a strawberry mascarpone pie, but they called and just said they were out, so I switched it to a, a chocolate pie. Wow, and that's it. Yeah, that's I mean, it. That's I, your I don't celebration. know what else. <laughs> yeah, that's all. I mean, what else do you do? It's just me and Emily. We're just hands behind your back and just a just a race to the other end of the crust. Just to, <laughs> yeah. please say it's going to be a pie eating contest. <laughs> I am so excited. Well, Kamel, so nice to see you. Give our best to Emily and stay safe and stay sterile and stay all all ripped and stay off the bread. And I will send you the photo later and give our best to the pies. I cannot wait. Thank you. The Lovebirds is available on Netflix starting this Friday. Kumail Nanjani, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Andra Day.